Hi everyone, this is Zhi Yuan from Zhejiang University. Today I would like to introduce our work, Predicting Code Context Models for Software Development Tasks. This work was done when I was working at the University of British Columbia. First of all, I would like to clarify what a development task is and what code context is. A development task could be any kind of task during the development of a software system. Let me take a bug fixing task as an example. The relevant bug report with the ID of 303431 could be found at the Eclipse Bugzilla bug tracker. And the bug exists in the Myling project and was reported in 2010 by Frank Becker. Once a developer started the task, she probably opened her IDE and did some code searching or code navigation. At the end of the task, the developer has access to repositories and five code elements. Note that some of the code elements may have been accessed multiple times during the task. Based on the information of accessed repositories and code elements, we could construct a code context model for this task. The code context model consists of the five source code elements and their structural relations between those elements. In the example code context model, all the structural relationships tend to be declaration. Note that the relations could be of other types like inherit, implement, and call. A number of related work focused on recommendation of code elements in a code context model. The recommendation can utilize information about the structure of the code. For example, Swade leverages topological features of the code structure to suggest a fuzzy set of potential code elements of interest. For a code context model, given elements already identified as interesting. The recommendation can also utilize the history of the software development project. The history may describe which files were changed or as a part of a task as found in a source code repository, or may contain information about both viewed and changed files as found in interaction history or change history data. Techniques like association rule mining can be used against historical information to suggest what other code elements have been associated with given seed code elements in the past. Let me take the bug fixing task as an example. In the middle of the task, the developer has already accessed three nodes, say node 1, 2, and 3. Most approaches currently recommend one element at a time. As for the running example, those approaches recommend node 4. However, this limits the support that can be conceived of for developers. In contrast to these approaches, our approach aims to proactively form code context models, that is, recommending more than one element at a time. So the basic idea of our approach is we first learn structural patterns from historical code context models as shown in the left graph with blue nodes. And then use those structural patterns to recommend multiple code elements at a time by doing subgraph matching to form the code context model. Note that our approach gives two-step prediction in this specific example. We explore three research questions to investigate the effectiveness of our approach for code context model prediction. The first research question considers the kinds of patterns that can be learned from interaction histories. The second research question considers the performance of our approach for code context model prediction and how the performance differs across various number of prediction steps. The third research question asks how our approach compares to the state of the art represented by the sweat algorithm. To experiment with the proactive formation of code context models, we need a dataset of such models. We form such a dataset using interaction histories captured as developers work with the Eclipse Miling open source project. 
We chose to use the modeling project as the data source for our investigation because the project has collected interaction histories for over 15 years. And these interaction histories represent work of over 117 developers. For the development of the Myling project, interaction histories are stored with the tasks recorded in the Eclipse Bugzilla system. To gather interaction histories, we considered over 5,000 fixed bug reports of the Myling project from the Bugzilla system between 2004 and 2019. The Eclipse modeling tool records interaction histories as a developer works on the code base. Each interaction history includes a record of the code elements that are viewed and edited by the developer. Miling enables one or more interaction histories to be associated with each task performed by developers on the system. From this set of fixed bug reports, we excluded those that did not have interaction histories associated with the report, leaving 1,246 bug reports to consider. Specifically, we extracted and used the last interaction history associated with each of these bug reports. As for the run example, we used the last interaction history 159708 which is a zipped XML file. For code context models, we are interested in representing the models that developers usually keep in their minds as they work with code for a task. As a result, we break interaction histories into working periods. In our data set, a working period consists of a portion of the events in an interaction history within a two hour time period. We are only interested in interaction histories recording work with code elements as opposed to documentation or configuration files. Thus, we filtered for interaction histories accessing or editing Java code elements. Structural dependencies between code elements are not available in interaction histories. To capture structural information, we need to be able to relate each interaction history to versions of the code active when the interaction history was collected. Thus, we firstly resolved the Git repositories for extracted code elements. Secondly, extracted event time steps from the interaction history. And thirdly, associated each working period with repository snapshots. We use Doxygen to identify structural relations between code elements. Specifically, we run Doxygen for each associated repository snapshot. In this paper, we considered four structural relations, declares, calls, inherits, and implements. Our final data set of code context models consists of 1,887 models. The size of code context models varies, with an average of just over 12 nodes. The code context models are typically comprised of multiple connect components, with an average of 4.6, indicating that developers work with multiple clusters of structurally connected code elements during a working period. The average diameter of connect components is 0.9, indicating that the developers did not navigate code elements by following structural dependencies in depth during a working period. Based on the data set, we observe that developers often work on different parts of the code base. An analysis of the code context models indicates that developers access each code elements an average of 4.8 times, each method elements 1.9 times, and each few elements 1.2 times. These relatively low rates of access to concrete code elements indicate that if we wish to build on patterns of access to predict code context models, we must abstract from the specific code elements accessed. We hypothesize that the roles the code elements play in the system are a basis for this abstraction. We use the method and class stereotypes taxonomy proposed in an ASE 2012 study to assign roles. The taxonomy provides 17 stereotype roles for method elements divided across four categories.
structural accessor, structural mutator, creational, and collaborational. An example of a specific stereotype within these categories is a structural mutator called command that indicates a method performing a complex change to an object state. The taxonomy also provides 17 stereotype roles for class elements, including data provider, which encapsulates data and consists mainly of accessor methods, and pure controller, that consists entirely of controller and factory methods. We use the proposed j code tool to assign stereotypes to each code element on the fly as needed during the prediction process. Specifically, we run the tool on the snapshots of code repositories associated with the context models. During the production, we search for each code element in the output of j code for the related snapshot to assign a stereotype. As for the run example, j code identifies the stereotype for each node in the code context model. For instance, node 3 is a data provider class and node 4 is a get method. Therefore, instead of concrete structural patterns, our approach in terms of learning abstract structural patterns, each code element in the training set has been assigned a stereotype. A repository of topological patterns is populated by graph-based substructure pattern mining. Specifically, we run GSPAN with the training set as an input and mean support as a parameter. GSPAN explores step-first search to find any connected subgraph G such that the support for each G is greater than a minimum support threshold. The experimental methods involves a training set and a test set. Given the sequential nature of our dataset, we used the 1254 code context model from the year 2007 to 2009 as the training set, and the 231 code context models from the year 2010 to 2011 as a test set. The figure summarizes the number of patterns mined from the training set with various numbers of nodes in the pattern. As the value of main support increases, the number of topological patterns decreases sharply from 142 to 2. This result indicates that topological patterns, even in terms of stereotype rows, are not frequently occurring in the dataset. Node 2 patterns account for more than half of the patterns across various mean support values. Node 5 patterns disappear when mean support is greater than 0.04, while Node 4 patterns disappear when mean support is greater than 0.06. To capture adequate topological patterns for prediction, we use those patterns for which mean support equals 0.02 in the experiments hereafter. Note that our proposed prediction approach leverages node n patterns to make d step prediction where n is greater than d. For example, node 3 patterns can support 1 step and 2 step predictions. The three figures on the top present the resulting F measure for one step, two step, and three step predictions. Each point represents the F measure for all the predictions across code context models with mean conf ranging from 0.1 to 1. The one step predictions achieve the highest F measure around 0.7, where mean conf equals 0.3 which is over 0.3 for two-step prediction at mean conf equals 0.6 and over 0.2 for three-step prediction at mean conf equals 0.1, respectively. The average F measure of one-step prediction is 0.48, which is 1.7 times higher than that of two-step prediction and 3.4 times higher than that of three-step prediction. Thus, one-step prediction significantly outperforms two-step and three-step predictions. The three figures in the bottom present the resulting precision and recall graph for one-step, two-step, and three-step predictions. Each point in each curve represents the average precision and recall of prediction results based on patterns with mean conf 
ranging from point 0.1 to 1. The label for each point indicates the corresponding mean cough. The precision average for D step predictions constantly increase and achieve the maximum values at the beginning and drops sharply as the record averages increase. The record averages increase as mean cough values increase. Overall, we observe that one-step predictions significantly outperforms two-step and three-step predictions. Mean cough can be used to make a trade-off between precision and recall for the prediction. The third research question asks how our approach compares to the state of the art represented by the SWEET algorithm. This table compares the precision, recall, and F-measure values of our approach and SWEET. Our approach show F measure values of 0 0.65, 0 0.58, and 0.49 when window size k equals 1, 3, and 5, respectively. This indicates that our approach significantly outperforms SWEET. In addition, the performance metrics of our approach and SWEET show similar tendency, which is as the window size k increases, precision values decrease but recall values increase. To summarize, in this work, we have explored how developer interaction histories can help predict code context models for software development tasks. We introduce the motivation and basic idea of our approach. We also provide the details of our data set, which enables future investigations by others. The experimental results demonstrate that integrating interaction histories and code structural information can benefit the proactive formation of more accurate code context models. For more details, please refer to our preprint at my homepage. Thank you for listening.